Mr. Letard, and you're watching the Cat's Eye News. Hey Novi, Dear Asian Youth is having another meeting next week on Monday, October 30th for Filipino American History Month. They'll be going over an informational slideshow and watching a short film about Filipino American history. Make sure to go check it out. Hey Novi, the French Club will be having their October meeting on the 31st on Tuesday after school in room 160. If you're interested, please scan the QR code on screen. If you're planning on playing girls lacrosse in the spring, make sure to show up to the informational meeting on Tuesday, November 14th in Coach West's room 243. There will be important information about the upcoming season, registration, conditioning, etc. If you can't come to the meeting, be sure to go visit Coach West for any information that you might need. Hey Wildcats, I'm here today to tell you about Box of Belovedness. Box of Belovedness is a nonprofit with a mission of providing school supplies to rural schools in India. They believe that education is everyone's right and that lack of supplies should not hinder a student's chance to success in life. You can scan the QR code on screen to donate, but if you don't want to donate, you could share this with other people or maybe email them for questions. All right, here we go one last time. I'm Neil. This year's fall play production of the Nomai Drama Club is The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, which opens today and runs tomorrow and the day after at 7 p.m. in the Black Box. Everyone involved has been putting a lot of time and effort into making this a great production. We would greatly appreciate it if you would come see the show. Again, you can go to novihs.seatyourself.biz to get tickets, or you can scan the QR codes on the posters you can see all throughout school. Do you know any of these wonderfully talented people? Well then come see the show. If you don't know them, still come see the show because we would love to have you there. Hope to see you there. Goodbye. What's up, Novi? Have you noticed these gray walls that have popped up around the school and the cafeteria? I don't know why they're here, and it appears many other people don't know either. So I went around the school investigating to figure out why these are here in the first place, how effective they've been, and how this ties into just our district and school in the bigger picture. But first, I went to the highest level of Novi High School administration because I assumed they were the ones that put them up and it appears I was correct. Yes, we placed those there this year to circumvent students' abilities to wander during lunches. For sure, and how effective have those been? They've been highly effective. Other staff members seem to share similar dissonance. For security purposes, the more they keep them in a more secluded area, they're able to watch and make sure that everybody's safe. I think it's a little bit more than a suggestion. I think we're trying to actually bring the kids back into the atrium or the dome or the commons during lunch. I think they do help keep students in the cafeteria during lunchtime a little bit. Many other staff members that we asked for an interview though, declined to comment. However, the students we asked were very vocal about their opinions of these walls and many were even confused as to why they were there in the first place. Yeah, I was kind of confused by them. You can literally like walk right around them, so I don't get like what they're even doing. I really don't like them because after I'm done eating lunch, I like to walk around and just like chill with my friends. So like they kind of trap us in. I think we should be able to roam the halls. Lunch is our free time and some kids want a quieter area. So so they should be able to go walk the halls and maybe get out of the confusion and craziness of the atrium. So that's interesting. We haven't heard that. You're saying not only do you want to roam, but you also think some kids need kind of peace and quiet. Yeah. So something that the counseling has also in, uh, brought in now is a quiet lunch space. It's room 108 um, and kids can go there for a quieter area as well. Uh, usually we try to like leave lunch early, you know, go to the library. But recently I've seen that some of the counselors are there. So they kind of stop you from going until like after lunch ends. They didn't announce anything. If you don't want kids to roam the hallway, you should also tell them, like, now we'll have barriers, don't walk through the barriers, or you'll get in trouble, instead of just, like, plopping them there and expecting us to not walk through them. So, do you think these walls should stay? Do you think they should be taken down? Whatever you think, they're probably here to stay. So, let's hear your thoughts. Kentucky's great. I love their chicken. But North Carolina, they got beaches. Kentucky can't compete with that. <laughs> What's up, Novi? Welcome back to College Game Day. As you can see, Braylon's out this week. So we got Nate and Chase to replace them. Starting off with Oregon at Utah. Utah's coming off a big win at USC, but no camera rising is going to be big for them. Give me Oregon in this one. Give me Oregon, Bo Nix. Yeah, give me Oregon. I disagree with these two. I'm definitely taking Utah for, I'm not even going to tell you why. Just I have a feeling. Utah, great state, nice canyons. Next, we got Duke at Louisville. Duke's coming off 
a big loss at Florida State, but I think they're going to pound out this one. Just kidding. Give me Louisville. Riley Leonard, uh, I said last week I really liked him, and I still do, but he's really banged up right now. Give me Louisville at home. You know what they say, guys? Only 10% of the game is won on the football field. The other 90% is won on the basketball court. <laughs> big fan of Duke's men's basketball program. Give me Duke. I love Kentucky. They got great chicken, but I'm going to have to go with Duke because I like North Carolina more. They got nice beaches, and the Kentuckians simply cannot compete with that. <laughs> Next up, we got Georgia versus Florida. Florida. Florida's never winning another game. Give me Georgia. Brock Bowers is out for probably the rest of the regular season, which makes Georgia's offense horrible. Uh, give me Florida in an upset. Gotta say, guys, the glass of orange juice I refreshed myself with this morning was probably from Florida. The game's also played in Jacksonville, which I know Florida's not in Jacksonville, but they basically have home field advantage. Give me Florida. I have to take Florida on this one. Atlanta's just an overrated city, and my parents are probably retiring there anyway, so yeah, Florida. Thank you for tuning in to the third episode of College Game Day. Let us know if you want to be on the next one, and we'll see you guys next week. What's up, Wildcats? Thanks for watching today's episode. This is going to be the only episode this week, so stay tuned for next week for our next episode. But as always, see you, Wildcats.